Can people hear me and see me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Everybody having a decent day? Sure. <laughs> it's going by pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. It's 1 p.m. and I believe we have a quorum is five. Is that correct, Bob? Yes. So we have five commissioners. If I could ask commissioners to the extent they are able to, to turn on their cameras, we will begin the meeting. And uh, tech support, Kamal, we are recording, is that correct? Uh, that's correct, Joe. All right, great, thank you so much. Good afternoon and welcome to the January 10th, 2023, regular meeting of the Community Development Commission of Chicago which of course is our first meeting of 2023. So happy new year, everyone. I am Gwendolyn Hatton Butler, chairwoman of the CDC and host of today's virtual meeting. I will now call to order the January 10th, 2023 meeting of the Community Development Commission. On December 8th, 2022, Governor Pritzker renewed his executive order proclaiming that all counties in the state of Illinois as a disaster area. Section seven of the Illinois Open Meetings Act allows the CDC, along with other city boards and commissions to host virtual meetings during this COVID-19 public health emergency, provided that certain conditions are met. One of those conditions is that the chair of this commission determines that an in-person meeting on the scheduled meeting date would not be practical or prudent. To ensure that today's virtual meeting meets all conditions of the Open Meetings Act, I'm hereby making the determination pursuant to section 7E2 of the act that due to the COVID-19 public health emergency, an in-person meeting would not have been practical or prudent today. Therefore, in accordance with the commission's emergency rules, this meeting is being held virtually on Zoom and can be viewed live via the commission's website. A court reporter is present today to record the proceedings. Commissioners, you have all been designated as panelists, which allows you to control your microphone. Please remember to place your microphone on mute unless you wish to speak. If you would like to be recognized by the chair, please activate the raise your hand feature and you will be called in order. The agenda for today's meeting was posted on January 3rd, both online at the CDC's website and physically in City Hall. Before we begin the meeting with a call of the roll, we must acknowledge very unfortunate news regarding one of our colleagues, Vice Chair Shirley Newsom. As some of you may know, Vice Chair Newsom passed away on December 25th, 2022. It's with very heavy heart that I make this announcement. And I apologize if um, members of the commission staff were not aware of her passing. Vice Chair Newsom was appointed to the CDC in 2012 and appointed vice chair in 2015. Uh, Shirley, and I'm just going to call her Shirley, she had an extraordinary life, made so many contributions to this community, and in addition to uh, leaving um, a legacy that can be celebrated by her family and friends, we can all celebrate Shirley's substantial contributions to this city through her civic engagement. Um, she has provided the Community Development Commission over her almost 11 years on the commission, extraordinary insights and observations, asked penetrating questions, always to the heart of the matter, 
And for me, um, as a um, newbie chair, was so gracious with her time and provided me with significant advice and counsel. It's very hard for me to get through this. So I will just say that uh, we celebrate her life, we celebrate her contributions, and um, we um, want to make sure that the public is aware of Vice Chair Shirley Newsom's su substantial contribution to uh, this city. Uh, Commissioner Cox. Uh, no, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for, for sharing. Uh, sharing the news. I, I also want to express uh, my condolences to, to Shirley's family, uh, to her friends and, and associates who, uh, who've really been, been blessed by her life and uh, the legacy that she uh, is leaving. Uh, 10 years, over 10 years presence on this CDC board um, was really just a snapshot of the public service career that spanned decades. Uh, multiple volunteer and professional roles, and especially um, an incredibly tireless um, advocate for her North Kenwood and Oakland and Bronzeville, Hyde Park, uh, Woodlawn. I mean, it's, it's incredible. And her um, kind of enduring commitment to Chicago was in many ways kind of ahead of her time. I mean, most notably, I think, through her support uh, of public engagement, of equity, of sustainable growth, uh, which I think today are kind of fundamental components of virtually every city planning and development effort. Uh, and she kind of blazed the path. So she was a leader. Uh, we considered her a partner in our efforts and an incredible listener. Um, and I think her commitment to, to public service um, is really only surpassed by her kindness uh, and her goodwill. So um, I think she, she led an incredible life uh, with incredible grace that I think we all learn from. Uh, and I think she will uh, never ever be forgotten. So I just wanted to share from the perspective of uh, the planning department uh, who worked very, very closely with her for this administration. Um, we uh, very much send our condolences to her families and, and the friends and associates. We will, um, we will all miss her. Yes, indeed, Commissioner Cox, we will all miss Vice Chair Newsom. Thank you so much for your comments. I will now call to order the January 10th, 2023 meeting of the Community Development Commission, what they call of the role. Commissioners, when your name is called, please turn your microphone on, respond by saying present, and please also indicate that you can hear me. Secretary Wheat. Present and I can hear you. Commissioner Buford. Present and I can hear you. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Commissioner Cox. Present, I can hear you and see you. Commissioner Curtis. Commissioner Davis. Here, I can hear you and I'm saddened by um, uh, Commissioner Newsom's passing. Thank you for alerting us and thank you for your words about it. I, I am sobered by it. Indeed. Mm. Very sobered, indeed. Uh, Commissioner Gomez. Present, I can hear you. Commissioner Griggs. Commissioner Thomas. Present and I can hear you. Commissioner Torbino. Present and I can hear you as well. And Chair Butler is present. Uh, we have a quorum. The first item on our agenda requests approval of the minutes from our previous meeting held on December 13th, 2022. The commissioners have had an opportunity to review the minutes and if there are no corrections, I am looking for a motion to approve. Do I have a motion? So moved, Commissioner Thomas. Do I have a second? A second. second by Trevino. I'm sorry, who's second? I defer to Trevino. <laughs> okay, thank you, Commissioner Trevino. In accordance with the Open Meetings Act, all votes are to be conducted by roll call so that each member's vote on each issue can be identified and recorded. 
Commissioners, if you were not in attendance during the December 13th meeting, please abstain from this vote. Secretary Wheat. Yes. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Yes. Commissioner Curtis. Commissioner Davis. Yes. Commissioner Gomez. Yes. Commissioner Griggs. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino. Yes. And Chair Butler votes yes. The motion passes. The public was given an opportunity to provide written comments up to 24 hours prior to the start of this meeting through the CDC email address, cdc at cityofchicago.org. Uh, Bob, can you confirm if we received or have not received written comments? We have not received written comments. Thank you. So we are stating for the record that there were no written comments in the CDC mailbox for today's meeting. Commissioners, for our first item of new business, the Department of Planning and Development is seeking approval to negotiate a redevelopment agreement with Celadon Construction Corporation, NFP, Celadon Partners, LLC, Blackwood Development Partners, LLC, and a to be formed affiliate for the redevelopment of the properties located at 4700 South Ashland Avenue, 4707 South Marshfield Avenue, and 1635 through 1643 West 47th Street in the 47th Ashland Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project area, and to recommend to the City Council of the City of Chicago the designation of Celadon Construction Corporation, NFP, Celadon Partners, LLC, Blackwood Development Partners, LLC, and a to be formed affiliate as developer. William Grams will present this item on behalf of the Department of Planning and Development. William, you may begin. William, you're on mute. Sorry about that. All right. We can hear you now. All right, it's my screen. Is my screen appearing? Yes. Just yeah. yes. All right, great. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairwoman Butler and members of the commission. For the record, my name is William Grams with the Department of Planning and Development. With me today, I have Tim Jeffries with DPD and Aaron Weisner and Jose Duarte from the development team. The, develop, the resolution before you requests a recommendation to the City Council to designate Celadon Construction Corporation, NFP, Celadon Partners, LLC, Blackwood Development Partners, LLC, and to be formed affiliates as developer for the United Yards 1B project. It also requests authority for the Department of Planning and Development to negotiate a redevelopment agreement with the developer. The United Yards 1B project is located at 4700 South Ashland Avenue, 4707 South Marshfield Avenue, and 1635 to 1643 West 47th Street, which is in the 20th Ward, the New City Community Area, and the 47th and Ashland TIF District, and the Southwest planning area. The older woman is Jeanette Taylor. This district was established in 2002 to foster improvements along Ashland Avenue and 47th Street in the back of the yards community. United Yards 1B involves the substantial rehabilitation of the showroom floor of the Goldblatt, former Goldblatt's department store into an approximately 15,000 square foot federally qualified health center as well as a 7,200 square foot feet of retail space for local minority owned small businesses. The project will also include the new construction of a 6,000 square foot retail building immediately adjacent to the Goldbots building intended to inc include community space and retail space for another local small business. The total project cost is $17.4 million and the TIF request is for $4 million. 
the estimated timeline to complete is 12 months. Here is an overhead view of the neighborhood. The project site is located on the southwest corner of 47th Street and Ashland Avenue and the southwest corner of 47th Street and Marshfield Avenue and is served by the number nine Ashland Avenue bus and the number 47, 47th Street bus. Here is a view showing the current condition of the former Gold Blast building. While the, while the ground floor is vacant, the new city supportive living apartments are on the upper floors. Here is a view showing the current condition of 1635 to 1647 West 47th Street. The United Yards 1B project is the commercial portion of the larger United Yards proposal, which came about through a request for proposals issued by, issued by the De Department of Planning and Development for the Invest Southwest 47th Street corridor. This slide shows the southern view, looking view of the master plan for the United Yards proposal. United Yards 1B is contained within the outlined red rectangle on the right hand side. Here is a rendering of the newly constructed commercial building to be located at 1635 to 1647 West 47th Street on the southwest corner of 47th Street in Marshfield. Celadon Partners LLC, Blackwood Development Partners LLC, and their affiliates are the developer entities leading this project. Celadon is led by Scott Henry and Aaron Weisner and focuses on affordable housing development. They were also involved in the New City Supportive Living Project, which is in the upper floors of the Goldblatt's building that is part of this project. Blackwood is led by Rafael Hernandez and Jose Duarte. Blackwood was founded in 2006 and acts as a general contractor, construction manager, design builder, and developer with experience in commercial, residential, retail, and office projects. In addition to the TIF, the project will be financed through a mix of debt, donation tax credits, new markets tax credits, and other grants. The city intends to provide the developer with TIF assistance in an amount not to equal or not to exceed $4 million. The city funds will be, be provided from the 47th and Ashland TIF districts area-wide increment. The first $2 million will be paid out upon the issuance of, of the certificate of completion. The second 2 million will be paid out at the one year anniversary of the certificate. DPD has thoroughly reviewed the proposed project, the qualifications of the development team, and the need for public assistance. DPD recommends that the Community Development Commission approve the designation of Celadon Construction Corporation, NFP, Celadon Partners, LLC, Blackwood Development Partners, LLC, and to be formed affiliates as developer for the United Yards 1B project so that the project can advance to city council. Thank you for your time. And as I mentioned, I have um, members of the development team that are also here available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, William. Uh, I don't know, Kamal, can you help me? Is Alderman Jeanette Taylor of the 20th Ward or anyone from her staff on this Zoom meeting call? Um, I, I don't know the staff names. If someone is here from Alderman Taylor's office, if you can please raise your hand. I, I don't see any hands. I raised. know that the older woman was not um, able to, to join today, but she has provided letters of support for the project. Thank you for that clarification, William. Commissioners, if you have any questions regarding the agenda item, please use the raise your hand function to be recognized. Secretary Wheat. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, a couple of questions, first starting with the sources and uses. Can you provide uh, more detail on, there's a, a, a pretty hefty line on donation tax credits and provide more detail about what that all entails? And William, can you go back to that page so that we can see that sure. item? Sure, and if I may invite uh, Aaron uh, 
wiser to to speak on this question. Thank you, Billy, and thank you, everyone, for uh, your consideration today. So we are um, assuming start, a for, for purposes of this public meeting, can you please introduce yourself? Oh, excuse me. Yes. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, my name is Aaron Weisner. I'm a principal with, with Celadon Partners, um, which is uh, half of the development team for United Yards. Um, and the donation tax credits, that's a shorthand for the Illinois Affordable Housing Tax Credit Program. Um, it's a program that we've used on previous transactions. Um, and the reason it's such a substantial number, uh, Mr. Wheat, is that we're, um, we're using a pretty um, large portion of the ground floor, the showroom space of the Goldblatt's building um, and a previously negotiated acquisition price for that space. Um, the, there's a, um, the, the appraised value of that space will be much higher. So it's uh, a, um, the portion of that, that generates a substantial amount of basis, more than you would normally see for a transaction like this. So about 80% of this value is based just on that, um, on that, uh, that um, bargain sale uh, value that we're, we're generating there. Um, this is uh, already has, we already have a commitment from us bank and are working with the department of housing for that uh, transaction, because we're using this on our broader, development for United Yards, which includes the uh, residential portion of this development as well. Um, and that's probably what is the basis for that for that figure. Madam Chair, if I can ask a, a couple more questions. Yes, please. Right, thank you. So I think that makes sense. Allow me to ask a, a question wrapped in stupidity. Can you use uh, IDA tax credits on a commercial property or does that go to the like we in our in our materials there's a very kind of complicated ownership chart that looks like someone designing an, an offensive football play and so i don't know if it if if that's a part of the the structure as well we have one of those uh org charts that I'm looks, sorry, uh, I looks need like to identify um, oh, excuse me i'm sorry i did again see. sorry this is this is aaron weisner um celadon partners um, of the development team, excuse me. And um, uh, yes, and I'm sorry, I'm taking the lion's share of these answers because I'm, I'm the one responsible for this portion of our of our development. And as I mentioned, uh, as, as as Billy mentioned, the Blackwood group is on this uh, this team and, and on this call as well. But to answer that question, we do have one of those org charts that looks like a, uh, a call sheet for, for the uh, Chicago Bears. Um, but in this situation, it's uh, the only reason this works to use donation tax credits on what is primarily really enti entirely a phase that is a commercial retail development is for two reasons. Um, and we are working with, uh, with, with, we've worked with um, council on this to confirm and working with the Department of Housing as they actually not Ida, but the Department of Housing will be the conduit for these credits because um, they have their own allocation of Illinois affordable housing tax credit. Um, because this is a part of the development that has a residential purpose. For example, on that Marshfield site, there's two three flat affordable develop or, uh, buildings that are going in right next to the new build construction, uh, the new construction um, retail space. But also as a part of this, we were developing another 86 units at least of, of affordable housing as a part of this overall development. So that's one of the two reasons. And the other one is that this is being done to enhance a building that has 100 units of affordable housing above it. So all of the floors above, above this ground floor are, uh, are a supportive living facility with affordable units up there. So th that's how we're able to do that here. Got it. That's that's helpful. One more question on sources and uses and then a, a general question. The, the 1.5 million from the community trust, is that money, uh, has that money already been Commit it, and are there stipulations uh, around around its use? This is uh, Aaron Weisner. One last time, Celadon Partners. Um, uh, and yes, th this has been um, we've been approved. We've actually drawn the first of the three installments of this. About twenty five percent of those funds, we were selected because one of the elements of this development that the Chicago Community Trust was interested in is the fact that we're have a, we have a focus on not just local 
minority owned business development with this, but actually transitioning these property, their, their portion of this development to ownership by these local small businesses. So approximately 9,000 square feet of the uh, approximately 24,000 square feet that are in the ground floor of the Goldblatt's building ultimately is intended to go to those local businesses um, at the end of the new markets tax credit compliance period, which is a seven year period. We're unable to do it sooner than that, but we have a lease that gives them full and complete control really from day one uh, and a lot of small business training services that were already, we started doing earlier this year, last year now um, with those groups. So the Chicago Community Trust has, the only stipulation is that we use it for the development of the retail space um, that is a part of United Yards. Thank you. And one final question. I know that in the documents it mentioned uh, using part of the space for a federally qualified health center. Has that center been been uh, determined and what's their, their timeline? I ask that question because I know a variety of, of health uh, centers around the country actually are, are facing some fiscal issues due to reduced revenue associated with um, less pandemic funding. Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and that's creating some stressors across the community health clinic network. So what's what's the status of the FQHC um, in question? Thank you. This is uh, Aaron Weisner with Celadon Partners. Uh, we have a um, commitment and we're finalizing a, a fully detailed letter of intent, which would be basically our lease agreement with Friend Health. Um, they're an FQHC uh, locally based. They actually have a facility that is about a block um, south of this on Ashland that is deteriorated. And they've been fearing, feeling a significant amount of financial stress because of the need to recapitalize that facility. Um, so uh, actually at the um, introduction of um, Alderwoman Taylor, we've been working with them. Um, so the benefit to them is that we, we are a part of our budget is to fully build out uh, not just the, the core and shell, but the tenant improvements of this facility for them. Um, and we've worked with them to have a really reduced per square foot rent for them to use that portion of the facility. Um, so, you know, roughly fall 2024, they'll be moving into that space and from their old space um, at a significant savings from what they would have had to pay if they were recapitalizing. Got it. Thank you very much. No other questions from me, Madam Chair. Thank you, Secretary Wheat. Do other members of the commission have questions? If you do, please raise your hand. Uh, Kamal, can you confirm for me that no members of the commission have raised their hand? No hands raised. All right, Kamal, can you confirm if anyone uh, from the public has signed up to speak? Uh, I, I don't know if anyone has signed up and um, I don't see any hands raised in Zoom for any public speakers. All right. If anyone from a member of the public would like to speak uh, regarding this matter, you have three minutes and you can uh, identify yourself by using the raise your hand function. So we'll just wait a moment to see if anyone raises their hand. And also the people who are on the phone can press star nine in Zoom uh, to raise their hand. Uh, I mean, star nine on their phone to raise their hand in Zoom. All right, uh, Commissioner Cox. Well, Madam Chair, just a point of clarification. Are we taking the um, item of the commercial space of the Goblat separately from the new construction project? Are those two separate things? Uh, I'm going to ask, I just have one uh, resolution here. So I'm going to ask uh, William okay. Grant, the department, to answer that question. Those are all together. Okay. So you'd be so, voting on both of them. All right. So thank you. So I would like, uh, I, the, uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Wisner, for your description, particularly of the uh, local um, ownership. Uh, it's a very innovative model. Um, of having uh, local um, entrepreneurs own a portion, almost like a co-op or a condo uh, uh, of the building. So uh, I think we're breaking some new ground here. And thank you for um, engaging in, in that, uh, that kind of innovation, um, as well as obviously, you know, the uh, public health, access to good public health, that's been 
a, a pretty much a constant uh, that we've uh, been seeing over the past year uh, post COVID. And the ones people re recognize that this is not a nice to have, this is an absolute necessity. Uh, so thank you for uh, the partnership and the role, I guess, uh, that older woman Taylor played in making that connection because Friend Health has opened up a facility in, uh, in Woodlawn. Um, I did want uh, you to talk a little bit about the innovation with the new construction, because I know the partnership that you forge to make that happen is again, um, lifting up Latino entrepreneurship in back of the yards. And uh, I, you know, I was gonna hold my question and thinking it was a separate thing, but if it's all part of one, I think it would be helpful if you describe a little bit what you're doing uh, with that portion of the block. Sure. Um, thank you, Commissioner. And, and uh, this is Aaron Weisner with Solid On Partners. Um, and and to, to the commissioner's being modest, it was partially his, um, uh, in, well, he really, him and his team's input in the um, RFP process that helped us kind of come to this concept as we we're going through the selection, probably the post um, selection process for Invest Southwest. We had two residential three flats that were facing 47th Street and needed a clear um, a waiver to have residential on the on the retail strip there on 47th Street, which would have required a zoning um, change and and was somewhat discordant for the rest of uh, the, the corridor there along 47th. And we'll and, uh, return seen... to the image that we're talking about. Oh. There it is. Thank you. Yeah, that one's perfect. So along the uh, to the right side is, is 47th Street. And originally those two three flat buildings that you'll see that you can see in the distance there past the brewery building were facing 47th. And there was a parking lot here. Um, the suggestion was came was given from several fronts going through design review to uh, reorient this site uh, to have the residential facing Marshfield um, and to add uh, an, an additional commercial use here. Our partner on this development is um, a group called Back of the Arts Works. It was actually one of the other um, one of the other respondents to this RFP, and um, we through that process and um, really with the support of the department, started collaborating and brought in the majority of the small businesses that were a part of another tr um, uh, development team into this. Uh, and so, in the Goldblatt's building, you will have. A, uh, a small, the, the, there are a couple of small businesses, Back of the Arts Coffee, La Selva T-shirt shop, um, a, a local bakery, as well as a, um, a barbershop uh, cooperative that are all right now operating for the most part out of um, homes and apartments in Back of the Arts, but have been looking at options, uh, finding them extremely expensive for a startup business in this time. Um, they'll all be moving into those shops this um, space here is proposed as a brewery because one of the other members of the team was the Somos Monos uh, Brewing Company, another locally owned um, Latinx owned uh, um, brewery, their brewer that was again working for the most part from home um, and has a business plan to use this space uh, to create um, not just a, a brewery but also a community gathering space. You can see the upstairs is really meant to be a community gathering space. Um, there's not much of those types of spaces in back of the yards at the moment. Frankly, even to have our community meetings, we had to use the basement of a local elementary school just to have a meeting for um, you know the, the proposal of this development. Uh, and so the idea being that that we would be giving this ground floor space, developing this ground floor space for Somos Monos, um, and other than um, their triple net expenses of of real estate taxes and insurance. Um, and utilities, they would be paying no um, commercial uh, lease payment to to our development team, um, and they'd be able to operate there as they get launched as a as a new startup business. And as I mentioned for the um, Goldblatt space, the idea is that at the end that they would have the opportunity to take over ownership um, at uh, at no cost uh, and continue after you know beyond as as owners of those businesses. That's great. Thank you for that explanation. I mean, I, I, I just there's a level of innovation going on here that I just did not want to be missed by the commissioners. So thank you for the further explanation. Thank you for the inspiration to uh, to 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 try. We have definitely learned a lot over the past year. So thank you for uh, 
uh, helping us to come to this uh, this 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 idea. Well, thank you both, Commissioner Cox. Any additional questions or comments? No, thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioners. If there are no further questions or comments, I will now call the item to a vote. In the matter before us, the Department of Planning and Development is seeking approval to negotiate a redevelopment agreement with Celadon Construction Corporation, NFP, Celadon Partners, LLC, Blackwood Development Partners, LLC, and a to-be-formed affiliate for the redevelopment of the properties located at 4700 South Ashland Avenue, 4707 South Marshville Avenue, and 1635 through 1643 West 47th Street in the 47th Ashland Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project area, and to recommend to the City Council of the City of Chicago the designation of Celadon Construction Corporation, NFP, Celadon Partners, LLC, Blackwood Development Partners, LLC, and a 2 b form affiliate as developer. Do I have a motion? So moved, Wheat. So moved by Secretary Wheat. Do I have a second? Second, second. Thomas. Go ahead. A second uh, by Commissioner Thomas. In accordance with the Open Meetings Act, all votes are to be conducted by roll call so that each member's vote on each issue can be identified and recorded. Please signify your vote on approval of the motion by saying yes, no, or abstain. I will now call the, call the vote. Secretary Wheat. Yes. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Yes. Commissioner Curtis. Commissioner Davis. Yes. Commissioner Gomez. Abstain. Commissioner Griggs. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino. Yes. And Chair Butler votes yes. The motion passes. New business item B for our next agenda item, the Department of Planning and Development requests authority to acquire the property located at 902 West 18th Street and 947 West 16th Street in the Pilsen Industrial Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project area. Ernest Bellamy will provide the staff report on behalf of the Department of Planning and Development. Ernest, you may begin. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairwoman and members of the commission. For the record, my name is Ernest Bellamy, city planner with the Department of Planning and Development. The resolution before you requests uh, acquisition for um, the city to acquire acquisition authority for properties uh, roughly located at 902 West 18th Street and 947 West 16th Street so that the city can purchase those properties from LMA Properties LLC as part of a larger uh, commitment to deliver uh, a redevelopment for the Pilsen neighborhood. The proposed land acquisition is located in the Lower West Side community area um, um, in the Pilsen Industrial TIF and the 25th Ward led by Alderman Citro Lopez. The site consists of two pins comprising roughly 1.95 acres of land. Uh, this property uh, represents uh, one of the last and, and certainly largest, uh, one of the larger parcels of vacant land uh, in the dense and diverse, uh, culturally rich Pilsen neighborhood. The neighborhood itself has been uh, undergoing significant development pressures that have uh, upset the social, social economic uh, balance uh, of the community. Uh, this gentrification has raised the cost of housing and forced many long-term residents from their homes. Um, zooming in, uh, the parcels in, in question are, are, as highlighted on the screen, uh, roughly uh, bound by 18th Street to the south and 16th Street to the north, um, and roughly um, um, uh, just west of a, a prior uh, CDC um, acquisition authority request. Um, 
uh, that was completed towards the latter part of 2021. Uh, overall, um, uh, this is seen as a, a greater um, uh, part of, of uh, combining land and efforts um, we have uh, started to accomplish uh, within the community, um, starting from um, a vision of the El Paseo Trail, um, uh, started uh, through uh, prior work in, in 2006, uh, as well as um, a currently ongoing 18th Imperia Development Framework, uh, which seeks to um, uh, revitalize, uh, redevelop, and revitalize the, the site uh, just east of the uh, target parcels here today uh, for uh, mixed-use development. Again, uh, showing that, that difference uh, between the two parcels, uh, the 902 West 18th and the 947 West 16th Street uh, parcels are just uh, to the west of the 18th Imperia development framework parcel sites, uh, which um, equally um, all of the, the sites that at the, the northern uh, trailhead of uh, the El Paseo Trail which will be developed. Um, so again, uh, uh, proving um, the acquisition authority will allow us to the city to purchase and uh, remediate uh, the vacant land um, uh, and and deliver uh, again a, a new affordable uh, mixed use development to the site. Um, yeah. No specific plans have been uh, developed uh, for the site as of yet, uh, but the, the city is uh, in currently engaged in a robust, robust community um, engagement effort uh, to develop a plan for the land. Um, equally, uh, the, uh, the redevelopment of the uh, land um, we're targeting for, for acquisition aligns with the um, uh, uh, the TIF uh, redevelopment uh, so that uh, it improves the quality of life in the, the project area and surrounding community. Um, it is a, an environment uh, which will contribute more positively to the health, safety, and general welfare of the project area and surrounding community. And the um, uh, parcels um, um, uh, fit within the, the assim uh, assembling land uh, uh, to encourage, um, uh, well, encourage uh, land assembly um, of parcels uh, of appropriate shape and sufficient size for redevelopment. Um, overall, uh, uh, the project is in uh, conformance with the, the Pilsen Industrial TIF redevelopment plan and has Alderman Citro Lopez's um, uh, support. Uh, therefore, the Department of Planning and Development recommends that the uh, CDC recommend approval of acquisition authority for 902 West 18th Street and 947 West 16th Street. Thank you, Ernest, for that present, uh, presentation of the staff report. Is Alderman Sitjo Lopez of the 25th Ward or anyone from his staff on this uh, meeting today? Kamal, can you let me know if you see the Alderman? We have someone from 25th Ward. Okay, I see. Is it Ruben Frankel? Or Frankel? I see you raise your hand. Yes, hello. Uh, good afternoon. This is Ruben Franco, Director of Legislative Affairs for the 25th Ward. We did submit a letter of support to um, Commissioner Cox this morning. The Alderman is in full support of this. Um, we don't have any questions. It is a part of the ongoing development site for 18th and Peoria that was uh, previously approved. So we're all on board. Great. Thank you so much for participating in today's meeting and signifying um, the Alderman's support of this recommendation to the CDC. Commissioners, if you have any questions regarding the agenda item, please use the raise your hand function to be recognized. I 
I don't see any hands raised. Kamal, can you confirm? No hands raised. All right, thank you, commissioners. Uh, Kamal, has anyone signed up to speak? Uh, not that I know of. Any member of the public, if any member of the public is on and would like to speak, please utilize the raise your hand function. If you are on video, if you're on your phone, I believe you press star nine. Is that correct? No? Uh, that's, that's correct. Star nine. Um, thank you. I don't see any hand raised uh, under the attendees. Great, thank you so much for that confirmation, Kamal. Uh, commissioners, if there are no further questions or comments from members of the CDC, I will now call the item to a vote. In the matter before us, the Department of Planning and Development requests authority to acquire the property located at 902 West 18th Street and 947 West 16th Street in the Pilsen Industrial Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project area. Do I have a motion? So moved. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Davis. Moved by Commissioner Davis. Do I have a second? Second, Grace Chan McKibben. Thank you, Commissioner Chan McKibben. In accordance with the Open Meetings Act, all votes are to be conducted by roll call so that each member's vote on each, each issue can be identified and recorded. Please signify your vote on approval of the motion by saying yes, no, or abstain. I will now call the vote. Secretary Wheat. Yes. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Yes. Commissioner Curtis. Commissioner Davis. Yes. Commissioner Gomez. Commissioner Gomez. Uh, Commissioner Griggs. I can see Commissioner Griggs on the screen. If he's on, can he be unmuted? Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino. Yes. And Chairwoman Butler votes yes. The motion passes. For our third item of business. Um, Chair yes. Chairwoman uh, Butler, I, I too noticed that Cornelius Griggs is present, but uh, we did not acknowledge him in the roll call when he came on. Uh, I would just ask the PPD staff if they could reach out to him by cell phone and understand if he is there and would like to be registering his vote. I mean, I can't do it, but um, Bob McKenna, that might be something you could do just to understand if uh, Commissioner Griggs is going to be voting on any of these items. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Great. Cox. We'll work on that. Great. And I don't know if uh, tech support can unmute um, Commissioner Griggs. No, I just, I've requested several times that if he can unmute, but. Uh... Okay. Well, we will see, we will proceed. Uh, and hopefully uh, uh, Commissioner Griggs will be able to actively participate in the meeting. For our third item of business, the Department of Planning and Development requests authority to acquire the property located at 3801 through 3809 West Madison Street, 3843 West Madison Street, and 3849 through 3851 West Madison Street in the Madison Austin Corridor Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project area. Ernest Bellamy will provide the staff report on behalf of the Department of Planning and Development. Ernest, you may begin. Thank you, Chairwoman, and uh, good afternoon to you all again. Um, for the record, my name is Ernest Bellamy, City Planner with the Department of Planning and Development. Uh, the resolution before you requests acquisition authorization for the city to acquire acquisition authority for properties located roughly at 3801 through 09 West Madison Street and 3843 through 59 West Madison Street uh, so that the city um, can purchase those properties from um, for private owners, uh, which I will show on the, the uh, subsequent screen. Uh, as part of a larger redevelopment um, to deliver a mixed-use development 
to the West Garfo. Ernest, if I can interrupt you. Yes. Uh, the, the page, uh, this cover page, if you go back to your cover page, please. It says uh, 3843 through 59 West Madison Street. Is that correct? Um, correct. It, there's a, it's a, a condo uh, okay. commercial building. I just wanted to make sure the resolution has 3843 West Madison Street as a separate um, request, and and, it, and then it reads 3849 through 51. So I just want to make sure that we're consistent with what um, that the information and the request as it appears here is consistent with what uh, the resolution that I've been provided um, states. Correct. Uh, apologies, Chairwoman. Um, um, I'll see if I could fix it on the fly as we proceed through these slides. Apologies, you're muted. Clarification is all that's needed at this point. Thank you. No need to fix on the fly, this, this slide. Please proceed. Okay, thank you. Um, the proposed land acquisition, uh, again, is located in West Garfield Park community area uh, in the Madison Austin TIF and the 28th Ward led by Alderman Jason Irvin. The site, consist of seven pins comprising roughly uh, 0.59 acres of land uh, and the ownership uh, is, of the uh, is spread across uh, four private owners um, as seen on the screen. Uh, as a, a general uh, rough location in uh, uh, context, uh, the parcels are uh, located um, just at the western edge of Garfield Park along Madison Street, um, at the roughly at the southwest intersection of uh, Madison Street and, and Hamlin Boulevard. Zoomed in, uh, the seven parcels are as uh, seen here. Um, the parcel in between the two, uh, which will be later covered the, later, uh, is a, a prior uh, acquisition uh, that the the um, uh, city uh, acquired of the former West uh, Garfield Park Aldi site. Um, uh, as I alluded to, uh, the um, the acquisition overview. Um, well, the related development project. Uh, uh, is the West Garfield Park um, uh, Aldi, uh, which we acquired in the um, uh, West Garfield Park uh, Madison and Hamlin RFQ, um, uh, which the city, uh, which DPD um, has issued. Um, uh, key dates are are as you see on the right of your screen, as we're we're currently um, uh, working through the RFQ. Um, uh, and uh, selecting a team to go forward uh, with uh, development of the the site and the the overall site. Uh, the two parcels, um, uh, or pardon, the, the seven parcels, uh, uh, which we are um, seeking acquisition authority on, are um, as you see here on the screen, uh, more zoomed in. Um, the four parcels at uh, 3801 through 09 West Madison Street uh, and uh, the uh, condoed, commercial condo building uh, at roughly um, uh, 3843 through uh, 59 West Madison um, uh, can be seen uh, below. And um, equally on the left of the screen, um, the, the site as a, a total of um, what we're looking to combine with the the formerly acquired West uh, West Garfield Park Aldi uh, site. Overall, um, within the the um, um, RFQ uh, through the RFQ process, we're we're looking to facilitate a redevelopment of the the block for a new neighborhood grocery store uh, within um, a mixed use development. Um, the redevelopment um, overall uh, aligns with the 
uh, the larger TIF uh, redevelopment agreement and that it um, uh, will facilitate a, a assembly uh, preparation and, and marketing of uh, vacant land, vacant or and underutilized sites for retail, commercial, and residential development. It encourages the development of uh, retail and commercial activities along Madison Street um, uh, between um, uh, Keeler Avenue and, and Hamlin Avenue. Uh, and um, uh, it preserves the pedestrian orientation of appropriate retail nodes by encouraging pedestrian friendly uses and design uh, among other, among other um, um, uh, alignments with the RDA. Uh, subsequently, um, uh, the, the project, um, as previously stated, falls in conformance with the Madison Austin uh, TIF redevelopment plan and has uh, the support of Alderman Jason uh, Irvin. Uh, therefore, the Department of Planning and Development recommends the um, Community Development Commission uh, recommend approval of the acquisition authority um, for 3801 through 09 West Madison and um, 3843 through 59 West Madison. Thank you, Ernest. I'd like to recognize Alderman Jason Irvin of the 28th Ward, if he or anyone from his staff are on. Kamal, can you confirm that the- uh, How you doing? This is Alderman Irvin. I am, uh, I am here. Thank um, you, thank you. No, no, no problem at all. So I just wanted to let you know to do support this uh, acquisition in the 3800 block of Madison. Uh, we've already acquired the Aldi's and I think this would uh, bookend uh, the project for that whole 3,800 block on the south side of the street. And so I do support this and uh, look forward from a favorable recommendation from the CDC. Thank you, Alderman Irvin, for joining us today and signifying your strong support of this project. Commissioners, if you have any questions regarding the agenda item, please use the raise your hand function to be recognized. I don't see any hands raised, Kamal. Uh, can you confirm? No hands raised. Great, thank you so much. Uh, Kamal, has anyone signed up to speak? Uh, not that I know of. Okay, if any members of the public would like to speak on this matter, please utilize the raise your hand function so you can be acknowledged. If you are on the phone, uh, you can um, use that functionality by pressing star nine. Kamal, can you confirm if anyone has, and if any member of the public has indicated they would like to speak? No hands raised. Thank you so much. Commissioners, if there are no further questions or comments, I will call the item to a vote. And this is a clarification of my uh, previous comment regarding the recommendation. The Department of Planning and Development requests authority to acquire the property located at 3801 through 3809 West Madison Street and 3843 through 3859 West Madison Street in the Madison Austin Quarter Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project area. Do I have a motion? So moved, Thomas. Thank you, Commissioner Thomas. Do I have a second? Second, Grace Chan McKibben. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Chan McKibben. In accordance with the Open Meetings Act, all votes are to be conducted by roll call so that each member's vote on each issue can be identified and recorded. Please signify your vote on approval of the motion by saying yes, no, or abstain. I will now call the vote. Secretary Wheat. Yes. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Yes. Commissioner Curtis. Commissioner Davis. Yes. Commissioner Gomez. Commissioner Griggs. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino. Yes. And Chair Butler votes yes. The motion passes. For our fourth item of business, the Department of Planning and Development requests authority to acquire the property located at 3200 West Lake Street. 100 Ketsey Avenue, 3148 West Washington Boulevard, 
and 107 through 111 North Ketsey Avenue in the Chicago Central Park Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Area, the Midwest Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Area, and the Kinsey Industrial Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Area. Ernest Bellamy will provide the staff report on behalf of the Department of Planning and Development. Ernest, you may begin. Good afternoon again, uh, Chairwoman uh, and members of the commission. Um, uh, for the record, uh, my name is Ernest Bellamy, um, city planner for the West Planning Region of the Department of Planning and Development. Uh, the resolution before you uh, requests uh, authorization for the city to acquire acquisition authority for the properties located roughly at 3200 West Lake, 100 North Kedzie Avenue, uh, and 100 uh, 7 through 11 North Kedzie Avenue, uh, which um, uh, apologies for clarification to what the chairwoman has said also encompasses uh, 32, um, 3201 uh, West Washington Boulevard within um, that address range of 107 through 11 North Kedzie. Uh, so for clarification, uh, 3848 West Washington, which is the address that appears. Oops, my apologies. Yes. In the, in the, um, on the agenda. Is this part of the rec uh, request or not? 3841 West Washington Boulevard. My apologies, Chairwoman. 3841 West Washington Boulevard. Um, uh, that appears to be a, a typo. Um, uh, 3841 um, uh, would register in West Garfield Park uh, as opposed to these parcels in East Garfield Park. Okay, thank you. So uh, the uh, what we see on the screen is correct. Is that? Correct. Okay, great. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, overall, um, we are um, looking to uh, purchase those properties from for private owners um, as part of a larger um, development strategy in East Garfield Park. Uh, the proposed land ac acquisition is located in East Garfield Park in the East Garfield Park community area um, in the Chicago Central Park. Uh, Kinsey Industrial and Midwest TIFFs. Uh, and the 27th Ward led by Alderman Walter Burnett Jr. and 28th Ward led by Alderman Jason Irvin. The site consists of five pins uh, comprised of roughly 1.08 acres of land. Uh, and the four uh, private owners are, um, and, and or their entities are listed um, on, on the screen um, in the lower portion of the screen. Um, the uh, five parcels uh, are located roughly uh, um, on uh, straddling uh, the east and west sides of Kedzie Avenue within the East Garfield Park. Um, zoomed in, uh, um, their site adjacencies are, are uh, near to the um, Kedzie Avenue Green Line Station, uh, as well as uh, the Hatchery. Um, uh, uh, the proper the properties represent an opportunity for further uh, develop uh, further development opportunity uh, on underused and vacant land in uh, the, the diverse and culturally rich East Garfield Park uh, community area um, of which the neighborhood itself uh, has been at the cusp of undergoing significant development pressures uh, that can upset uh, the economic uh, the social and economic balance of the community. Uh, related to um, the acquisition of these parcels, these private parcels is um, a, um, a request for qualifications um, that was issued uh, last year um, within East Garfield Park uh, for uh, uh, city owned parcels um, along Kedzie Avenue um, adjacent to these sites. Um, uh, how these private parcels relate to that, uh, the, the current uh, RFQ 
as, as, um, as seen in plan on the left side of your screen and on the right side of your screen in um, a uh, massing um, uh, showing uh, the balancing between the two sites. Uh, overall, uh, ac acquiring the, the parcels uh, listed would uh, assist in a, a secondary phase of the R RFQ uh, so that um, uh, we can strengthen the, the opportunity uh, for redevelopment that um, uh, we are building up here in East Garfield Park. Um, and again, um, uh, uh, we're again we're looking to facilitate the redevelopment of a, a mixed use mixed use development along uh, West Lake Street uh, and North Kitsy Avenue. Uh, how uh, acquiring these parcels align with the various uh, uh, TIF redevelopment agreements? Uh, uh, to succinctly summarize, uh, it allows us to create a, a competitive, accessible, and safe and attractive uh, industrial environment or mixed use industrial environment that, that builds upon existing uh, infrastructure, infrastructure assets. Um, allows us uh, a design um, and encourage improvements to revitalize the commercial corridor quarters uh, of the area and promote um, the area as a, a place to do business, as well as uh, to help uh, eliminate um, the blighted conditions that um, cause the area to uh, qualify for TIF. Um, it's from here uh, that um, Uh, the uh, project is uh, in conformance uh, with the uh, Chicago Central Park um, uh, kids, the industrial um, and uh, the uh, Midwest TIF. Uh, the redevelopment, oh, also, um, uh, uh, the acquisition has the support of both Alderman Walter Burnett Jr. and uh, Alderman uh, Jason Irvin. Uh, therefore, the Department of Planning and Development recommends that the Community Development Commission uh, recommend approval and acquisition authority for 3200 West Lake Street, 100 North Kitsie Avenue, and 107 through 11 North Kitsie Avenue. Thank you, Ernest. I'd like to recognize uh, Alderman Walter Burnett of the 27th Ward, and if he's still with us, Alderman Jason Irvin of the 28th Ward, and ask if you would like to make a statement. Uh, yes, Alderman Irvin, uh, 28th Ward. Um, this area, uh, we currently have some uh, things happening there. It's right at Lake and Kedzie, part of that uh, TOD. Uh, for the area. Uh, these uh, parcels that are being acquired are pretty much uh, blighted. Uh, parcels have not produced anything of, of any uh, good tangibility for the community. Uh, I definitely support the acquisition of all of the parcels, the ones in 27 and the ones in 28 uh, for a larger development plan uh, for that corridor of Kedzie pretty much from Lake all the way to Washington. So again, look forward for a favorable recommendation uh, from the CDC. Uh, and if anyone has any questions, we'd be glad to answer. Thank you, Alderman Irvin. Is Alderman Burnett on as well, Kamal? Okay. Um, commissioners and Commissioner Cox, I see you have your hand raised. Uh, if you have any questions regarding the agenda item, please use the raise your hand function to be recognized. Commissioner Cox. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I mean, obviously seeing these present presentations uh, for acquisition authority uh, back to back to back, uh, the er Ernest Bellamy show uh, reminded me that perhaps I should stand back a bit and frame what the commissioners are seeing um, because um, 
uh, this is an evolution of the Invest Southwest strategy that you have uh, made, uh, you voted on all throughout 2022. Uh, a big difference is in the Invest Southwest corridors, they were chosen specifically because um, there was like a missing tooth or gap in an otherwise well-functioning commercial corridor. Uh, so we, you saw projects that were a block long, a single building, a block long, or you know, a, an infill corner parcel like the one we saw in back of the yards. But by and large, those commercial corridors are, are all there. Uh, they just needed um, reinvestment, whether it was adapted for use or plugging a hole with a mixed use uh, ground up uh, affordable housing development. Um, as we move outside of the 10 Invest Southwest communities, um, like Pilsen or West Garfield or East Garfield, we, you know, we're finding that the answer isn't a single building, uh, it's multiple buildings and multiple blocks. We literally have to reconstruct Main Street in areas like East and West Garfield. So you saw um, last year, we came to the commission to purchase the Aldi, the shuttered Aldi grocery store site. That was one of the first times that we proactively uh, went in and purchased um, a piece of property um, on a commercial corridor to help jumpstart a redevelopment proposal. And that is on its way. But um, as we began to study that, we also realized that the properties um, uh, on the other ends of that same block were uh, important and vital to a comprehensive kind of catalytic um, transformation. And so we sought the uh, alderman's support in having a larger acquisition strategy. And you saw that same um, tendency in Pilsen where the city purchased a multi-acre site, which is going to be critical for uh, what will be a significant affordable housing concentration. Um, the parcel that you acted on and you supported was a, a, a storage yard for 18 wheelers. Uh, and so we, we realized there would be important uh, opportunity to acquire the entire thing. And now you are seeing in, uh, in, um, in now, I guess this is East Garfield, um, the need uh, to assemble a host of fragmented pieces of uh, sites, which as the alderman said, are, are non-contributing, um, but um, would be absolutely critical for us having a multi-block strategy that will be built out over many years. Uh, and we are just days away from seeing the response, the development response to the first parcel that the city does own. So um, we're trying to be very, very strategic here. Uh, we're moving from the single building strategy to a micro district strategy. Uh, and so uh, it just became very, very apparent that, that something is going on here. And I didn't want you to uh, think that it wasn't without great intention uh, and uh, purposefulness and that we have been working hand in hand uh, with the alderman um, uh, to uh, pursue this strategy, which is new for us. And I look forward to us having even a greater catalytic impact on neighborhoods on the South and West side because of your support for this type of strategy. Thank you. Well, thank you, Commissioner Cox. Uh, your comments are very illuminating and, and very helpful in helping uh, the commission and, and the public um, understand uh, the department and the city strategy. So thank you so much for uh, your additional observations. Uh, commissioners, uh, do you, are there any additional questions or comments regarding the agenda item? Kamal, I don't see any hands raised by members of the commission. Can you confirm that's correct? Uh, no hands raised. All right, great. Uh, Kamal, can you, uh, let me know if any member of the public has signed up to speak or have their hands raised. Um, I don't see any hands raised from All right. Well, thank you so much. If there are members of the public who would like to speak on this matter, 
please use the raise your hand function or press star nine if you are on the phone. No hands raised. Thank you for that clarification, um, Kamal. Commissioners, if there are no further questions or comments, I will call the item to a vote. And once again, I need to um, modify my initial introduction um, of this item, as well as note that the agenda that was published was incorrect. We will not be considering acquisition authority for 3148 West Washington Boulevard. In the matter before us, the Department of Planning and Development requests authority to acquire the property located at 3200 West Lake Street, 100 Kedsey Avenue, and 107 through 111 North Kedsey Avenue in the Chicago Central Park Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Area, the Midwest Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Area, and the Kinsey Industrial Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Area. Do I have a motion? So moved, uh, Chair McKibben. Yeah, sorry. Uh, thank you, uh, <laughs> Commissioner Chair McKibben. Do I have a second? Second, second. Week, Commissioner Wheat. Great, thank you, Commissioner Wheat. In accordance with the Open Meetings Act, all votes are to be conducted by roll call so that each member's vote on each issue can be identified and reported. Please signify your vote on approval of the motion by saying yes, no, or abstain. I will now call the vote. And I will also note that uh, Commissioner Davis um, had a 2 p.m. Uh, uh, commitment and so is no longer participating in today's meeting. Uh, Secretary Wheat. Yes. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Yes. Commissioner Curtis. Commissioner Davis, Commissioner Gomez, Commissioner Griggs. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino. Yes. And Chair Butler votes yes, the motion passes. For our fifth and final item of business, the Department of Planning and Development requests authority to acquire the property located at 3801 through 3809 West Harrison Street in the Midwest Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project area. Ernest Bellamy will provide the staff report on behalf of the Department of Planning and Development. Good afternoon uh, again, Chairwoman. Um, uh, my apologies, uh, there, there seems to be an, uh, um, uh, a point of clarification with the address uh, for this one. Uh, this is uh, for uh, 3407 through 09 West Harrison. Thank you for that clarification. No problem. Um, and for the record, uh, my name is Ernest Bellamy, city planner uh, for the West Planning Region uh, with the Department of Planning and Development. Uh, the resolution before you um, requests authorization for the city to acquire acquisition authority for the, the properties uh, roughly located at 3407 through 09 uh, West Harrison uh, Street uh, so that the city can purchase uh, those properties from one private owner as part of a larger um, uh, commitment to deliver uh, uh, a new redevelopment for the North Lawndale neighborhood within the East Garfield Park community area. Uh, the proposed land acquisition is located uh, in the East Garfield Park community area uh, in the Midwest TIF and the 24th Ward led by Alderman Monique Scott. Uh, the site consists of roughly two pins um, comprising roughly uh, 0 0.04 acres of land. Um, and the uh, uh, private owner is, as, as shown on screen, um, the uh, overall, um, uh, the uh, site uh, has a, a billboard, uh, which has an easement uh, through an adjacent city owned parcel of which um, the easement agreement um, uh, calls for the vacation once a development um, uh, 
a development uh, interested uh, or developer interested in developing the site um, um, has come forward. Uh, A little bit of a, a verbiage uh, trickery here, or not not so much of a trickery, but uh, kind of a, a little bit of a confusion. Uh, this is in uh, the North Lawndale uh, neighborhood, uh, although the the sites sit within the East Garfield Park community area. Uh, the site overall just sits south of uh, I two ninety. The history that um, I alluded to uh, with regards to the the billboard uh, which had a uh, easement uh, that has a easement a current easement through uh, city-owned parcels um, has been uh, roughly in place since um, the early 2000s um, a, a nonprofit has um, um, come forward interested in uh, redeveloping a city-owned lot um, uh, along um, uh, um, the property for um, uh, future redevelopment. Um, and has, they have been currently engaged over the greater part of, of last year with the community over um, uh, what that look um, of the building should be, as well as um, uh, opportunities for uh, community engagement um, as the development uh, gets further fleshed out. Um, going to the, the site in question, um, um, highlighted in, in red uh, is the, the two parcels, uh, which has the, the billboard with uh, um, an easement running through the city owned lot. Um, acquiring the uh, parcel with, um, um, really uh, allow uh, uh, the city to kind of uh, sell off and, and, and hold um, a, a, a more true and proper developable site as opposed to have uh, kind of uh, this uh, uh, hanging two for Chad of a, a parcel that cannot be um, developed um, or uh, um, has the oddity of, um, of having this staggered uh, uh, parcel outline to it as well. Uh, overall, how does this uh, redevelopment um, adhere to uh, the um, RDA of the Midwest TIF? Uh, it helps to promote uh, business retention and, and new uh, employment development. And it helps to encourage the clustering uh, of similar and, and supportive commercial uses to promote, um, uh, uh, culminate uh, attraction, uh, multi-stop shopping and, and business activity and uh, improve the quality of life in the, the project area and surrounding community. Uh, subsequently, the, given that the project is in conformance with the, the Midwest uh, TIF redevelopment plan, and has um, um, the full support of Alderwoman Monique Scott. Uh, therefore, the Department of Planning and Development recommends that the Community Development Commission recommend uh, approval and acquisition authority for 3407 through 09 West Harrison Street. Thank you, Ernest. I'd like to recognize Alderwoman Monique Scott of the 24th Ward if she or a member of her staff are present with us today. This is Alder Woman Scott. How are you? Great, Alder Woman Scott. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Yes, I am in full support of this project. Um, I guess it's a long awaited um, for the six months that I've been here, but um, I am in full support um, and I'm in full support. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us today and, and, and uh, letting us know um, that you are in full support of the department's recommendation. It's much appreciated. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, if you have any questions regarding the agenda item, please use the raise your hand function to be recognized. Kamal, I don't see any hands raised. Can you confirm that is correct? That is correct. My hands raised. 
Thank you, Kamal. Uh, is, has anyone signed up to speak? Not that I know of. Great. And so if there are members of the public on um, and would like to speak for up to three minutes, uh, please um, raise, use the raise your hand function. If you're on the phone, press star nine. Kamal, can you confirm if there's anyone has responded? No hands raised. Great. Uh, are there any uh, questions by members of the commission or comments? So if there are no further questions or comments from the members of the commission, I will now call the item to a vote. However, I want to just clarify my comments at the beginning. The agenda as published and as provided um, to the members of the commission is correct with respect to the addresses the resolution that I was given is not. So I will restate the resolution um, and use the correct addresses. In the matter before us, the Department of Planning and Development request authority to acquire the property located at 3407 through 3409 West Harrison Street in the Midwest Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project area. Do I have a motion? So moved, Thomas. Thank you, Commissioner Thomas. Do I have a second? Second, second right, Commissioner Cox. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Cox. In accordance with the Open Meetings Act, all votes are to be conducted by roll call so that each member's vote on each issue can be identified and recorded. Please signify your vote on approval of the motion by saying yes, no, or abstain. I will now call the vote. Secretary Wheat. Yes. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Yes. Commissioner Curtis. Commissioner Davis. Commissioner Gomez. Commissioner Griggs. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino. Yes. And Chair Butler votes yes. The motion passes. I will now like to request a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Is anyone opposed to adjourning? <laughs> <laughs> well, Maurice Cox has raised his hand. He's opposed to <laughs> not, not, no. not to that. Not to, not to uh, oppose the adjournment. <laughs> but I, I did. Uh, I just wanted to thank thank you all uh, for your service and for uh, showing up and being present. You can you can tell this is very. Uh, important work uh, that we're being asked to do. Uh, it's it's building on uh, your track record, quite frankly, of last year, which was stellar. Uh, we closed on uh, and uh, broke ground on a number of Invest Southwest projects that you voted on. Uh, so there are shovels in the ground, uh, and you know we are going to be more ambitious this year. So we're gonna be bringing you a lot of projects, uh, a lot of acquisition strategies that you saw today. Uh, and, uh, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't thank you and acknowledge the work you did in 2022, which allowed us to really launch Invest Southwest and to bring you these projects, which are going to be uh, even more ambitious. Uh, so I know that your time is extraordinarily valuable your expertise is very, very, um, very specific. And I will say that we are going to try, um, we won't be able to fill the shoes of, of uh, Vice Chair Newsom, but we are going to try to increase the number so that the pressure isn't always as intense uh, that you show up or we won't meet a quorum. Um, I might be reaching out to you to find out if you have recommendations because the expertise here is so specific, um, I, I suspect you probably know more people who could lend the voice uh, than I do. So uh, if you get an email or a call from me, please do uh, take it. Uh, and uh, I will see you uh, uh, next, uh, next month. But uh, thank you so much for um, showing up and being so thoughtful and deliberate and helpful with your, um, your uh, comments and questions. This is one of my favorite boards because it really feels like we get to the, you know, we tug it out and hard questions are asked and uh, good work is being done. So thank you.
Well, thank you for recognizing and acknowledging the work of members of the commission. And on behalf of the members of the CDC, thank you, Commissioner Cox. It's my pleasure. My pleasure. So, motion to adjourn. Were you asking for one? <laughs> so moved. <laughs> all right. All right. I think we're. I think we're good. Okay. Unless anyone would like to make additional comments, uh, I hope everybody's uh, 2023 is off to a fabulous and productive start. And we will, uh, if not before, we'll we'll see everyone next month. Okay. Thank right. you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.